Hey everyone, Matt here with Night Run Studio, and in our last video we got our player set up so that you can push a button to attack. He's got a cooldown, however when the enemy comes, the attack isn't actually doing anything, it just looks pretty. And so in this video we're going to set things up so that we can actually deal some damage. So let's get started. So first off, in order to deal damage we need our enemy to actually have some health. So let's come into our scripts folder here, and we're just going to create a new C Sharp script. And we're going to call this one enemy underscore health. All right, now for this one, I always like to get rid of start and update just to have a nice clean slate. And so we're gonna make two variables here. First of all, we're gonna make a public integer, which will be our current health. We're also gonna make a public integer for our max health. Now, I generally like to assume that my enemy is always going to have his current health start at full. And so we can actually create a start method here where at start, we make our current health equal to our max health. All right, so now that we've got health, let's make it so we can actually change health. And here we're gonna do something similar to what we did in our player health method, where we create this change health and then and pass in the amount. So we're gonna make a public, and it is important this is public so that other scripts can talk to it. This will be a public void method called change health. We're just gonna pass in an integer called amount. All we wanna do in here is just take our current health, and then we're just gonna add the amount that gets passed in. This means we need to do two checks. First of all, we wanna check to see if we've overhealed. So if our current health becomes greater than our max health, we want to make sure that our current health gets set to be equal to max health. We'll also add an else if here. If our current health becomes less than or equal to zero, then we're going to want to have our death logic. Now for the moment, we're just going to destroy the game object once he gets there, though later we'll add an actual death state. All right, so at the moment we're now able to heal and also deal damage. Now we just need to actually have our script do this. So for this, we're gonna just head right into player combat. All right, so here in player combat, we have this attack method, but currently all it's doing is setting an attack pool and then a cooldown. Now we want the actual logic for damage to happen in between those two things. Again, this is gonna be similar to how our enemies deal damage to our player, but what we're just gonna do is make a collider 2D array. Let's call these enemies. And here it's going to be equal to, and we'll use the physics 2D overlap circle all. Now it needs some parameters though, so it knows how to find enemies. And for this, we're going to need to create a few new variables. So let's come right up to the top here. The first thing we'll need is a public transform. We'll call this attack point, and this is where our attack will originate. We then need to know the range of our weapon, so we'll make a float called weapon range, and I'll initialize that to 1, though we can change that later in Unity. Next, we need a way to know what it, an enemy actually is, so we'll use a layer mask here called enemy layer, and we'll set that up in a moment. Finally, we'll add a public integer called damage, which I'll initialize to 1, so that initially we'll just deal 1 damage to the enemy. At this point, we can come down to our overlap circle all function, and we can just add in those parameters. So we want it to originate at the attack point dot position. We want it to have a range of whatever our weapon range is. And finally, we want it to add anything that is on the enemy layer to our Collider 2D enemies array. I'm just going to pause there for a moment, head back into Unity and show how this is going to work. First of all, let's click on our enemy and add the enemy health script. We need to put in a max health. We've already coded it to make the current health equal the max as soon as we start the game. But if you didn't add that part, you can go ahead and set your current health to whatever you want it to be. Next, we can click on the player, and the first thing we're going to need to do is set an attack point. So I'll right click the player, create an empty game object, which we can call attack point, and then I just want to use my transform tool to move it out in front of the player to wherever it is I want his sword attack to come from. Now while clicked on the player, I can drag the attack point into that box. Next, we need to set a layer for our enemy. So let's go back to the enemy, click on layer here, now, if you do not already have an enemy layer, you can go down to the bottom and click Add Layer, and then just pick any of the boxes here and add enemy into it. You'll then need to go back to your enemy and just make sure that your enemy is assigned to that layer. You can then go back to our player and make sure that he knows that the enemy layer is that layer we just created called enemy. With that done, our player's all set up and we can finish off our script. So now we've created a list, or array, of all the enemies within range. We just need to deal damage to them. So here, we're going to check if when we swing the sword, the array of enemies has a length greater than zero, meaning there's at least one enemy, then we want to deal damage to enemy zero, the first one in the list. So enemy zero here refers to the collider, so we're going to look on that game object for the component called enemy health. 
And if we find it, we're going to change health. And here we just want to pass in a negative version of our damage. Remember, negative does damage and positive heals. So we're ready to test this now. Keep in mind that we haven't added a knockback effect or any sort of visual representation of the damage, so we'll have to look at the script to see his health going down. However, when we get in the game and attack, you'll notice that when I'm within range, his health goes down when I swing the sword, and when I'm out of range, it doesn't. Finally, when I finish him off, he actually is destroyed. However, you may have noticed that when I swung the sword there, the enemy was destroyed before the sword swing finished, and it looks kind of off, so let's fix that. So all of our damage dealing is happening in these lines of code right here, and at the moment, those fire as soon as we start the attack. We want to delay them a little bit, so let's create a new method. We'll make a public void called deal damage, and we can paste those lines of code back in here. Now we just want to make sure that we call these lines of code through our animation. All right, so now we just need to click on our player and then in our animation window, go to our slash animation. At this point, we just want to find the point in the animation at which we are actually wanting to deal damage. So I'm going to go right here where the sword hits the bottom of its arc. I'm now going to click this button here to add an event. And then we'll click on that. I can click on function. And I should be able to see the deal damage public function. Now, as soon as I hit that point in the animation, it will call deal damage. Now when I play the game, you can see that the damage is actually happening at the end of my arc, and the enemy doesn't get destroyed until the sword actually hits him. It's looking much better. All right, one last thing I want to do in this video. When I click on my enemy, you can see that we've got these nice gizmos here that help us to see where his attack range is and his search radius. We want to do something similar for the player so that we can better debug and set up his attacks. So let's head back into our player combat script. At the bottom here, we're just going to do a private void method called on draw gizmos selected. This just means if we've toggled on the gizmos, then whenever we are in our scene view, we'll be able to see them. First, let's just pick a color for this gizmo. We'll make this one red. And now we just have to say what kind of gizmo we want it to draw. And in this case, we're going to just draw a wire sphere. And let's put in the same parameters we are for our overlap circle. So we'll have it originate at our attack point dot position and we'll give it a radius of our weapon's range, so it will mimic the actual range of our attack. So now when I get in Unity, if I click on my player, you should be able to see a wire sphere here showing our weapon range. If not, you may need to just toggle on the gizmos up here in the corner. Now while I'm clicked on my player, you can see that my sword range is actually very large here, and so I might want to try something smaller like say 0.7, which is probably more accurate. I can also move the attack point around to make sure that it's actually where I want the attack to be happening. This will help us to debug our attack and make it much more effective, and then we can try it out and see if it's working. All right, I hope you have found this one helpful. At the moment, our attack is doing pretty well, but it really does need a knockback effect and a little bit of visuals so that it just looks a little more satisfying. We'll get to that in the next video. Until then, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.